Hey everyone, this is our last major topic from chapter 3. We're going to talk about how to add return values to the methods that we're writing in case you want to write accessor methods that can produce output uh, that you can send back to the place in your uh, function where you called that method. So we're going to talk about uh, the purpose of return values and then um, much like we did with parameters we're going to talk about some sort of strategies for designing and ways in which um, return values are different from print statements. And then we'll talk about the syntax. So when we go over return values, just like parameters were the input to a method, remember that return values you can think of as being like the output from a method. and most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time when we use return values, it's with accessor methods. There are some mutator methods that also return values, but all accessor methods by uh, definition have return values. And remember that the way that return values work is that um, wherever in your method you have the method call that generates that return value, uh, the value that gets returned is substituted for that method call in the place in that place in your code. And we'll see an example of that in a minute. Again, like with parameters, it's important to distinguish between a return value and a print statement, just like you need to distinguish between a parameter and user input. Return values are not print statements. And really, you should try to avoid putting print statements inside your methods. It's much more um, flexible if you can uh, have your method simply return a value and then print it somewhere else because sometimes when you use your method you don't want to print the value you want to assign it to a variable or you want to um, pass it to another method and you want to do it quietly you don't want to see the results of that method call so try to keep print statements separate in their own place in your program that's just designed for user output okay couple of things to, it's important to know about syntax. Here we are back at our look at the basic skeleton of a method. The return type is the variable type that comes after the word public and before the name of the method. And what it tells you is what type of value has to be returned by this method. Just like parameters have their own type and variables have their own types, return values have to have their own types and you have to match that. You can't declare a method as being public int foo and then inside foo return a string. That'll generate a syntax error. If a method doesn't return any values and you can't have methods that don't return anything, then that return type um, needs to be declared as void. Void is a special Java keyword that means no return value. Now inside the method, um, it's not enough to just declare a return type. Inside the method you actually have to use the return keyword and when you create a statement that is a return statement and you type the word return whatever two things happen. The first thing to know is that using a return statement causes the method to instantly quit at that moment in time. Not your whole program but the method quits and control comes back to the place in your program where you called that method. And along the way, whatever expression um, comes after the return keyword, um, whatever, that exp whatever value that expression evaluates to is the value that gets sent back and substituted for the method call, like we talked about before. So again, the return type is important. Make sure that whatever comes after the word return is going to match the required return type for the method that you're using. It's also important to understand that since a return method causes your method to quit, or sorry, since a return command causes your method to quit, you can't put any code after a return statement in your program. Um, in fact, if you try to do that, you'll get a syntax error that's called unreachable statement because Java knows that the code that comes after your return statement is never going to get reached by any time that your program ever runs. Just like with parameters, it's really important that you write comments for your return values. The syntax is a little bit different though um, because return values don't get declared in advance as variables like parameters do. And so the tag that we're going to use is not at param, it's going to be at return. And 
in the case of at return, all we have to write is at return and then a space, and then the rest of that line is a one-line comment that gets matched up um, and put in the method detail under the return um, portion of your method detail. Okay, let's see an example of some of those things. So we're going to take a look again at our student class. By the way, I've modified the constructor for our student class so that in addition to taking a name as a parameter, it can also take a grade. And we've constructed a new student. We've modified our Marcy object so that in addition to naming the student Marcy, we've also assigned her to the 10th grade. Now the method that I wrote um, is this method here called getGradYear. And what it attempts to do is it attempts to take the current year and then based on the student's grade, determine the year that that student is going to graduate. Um, if you take a look at the comments here, you can see we have our normal one-line description and then we have at return. What does the method return? It returns the graduation year. So that's what we say. Notice that we have to put int as the return type since we're going to be returning an integer year. And if you take a look at what's in here, this uh, method leverages the Gregorian calendar class that you used for one of your previous labs. We create a calendar which by default contains today's date. We extract the year from that calendar object. We calculate how many years are left um, before the student graduates. And then what we do is we add that amount to the um, year. And so uh, this method is a little overly simplistic because depending on what time it is during the school year, if it's in the fall or the spring, you're going to be a little bit off. So we'll just make the assumption that we're running this method in the actual year of that year's graduation. So this method only really works for the spring, but that's okay. For now, that's fine. Um, the last and most important thing as far as this lesson is concerned is this last statement that returns grad year. Again, grad year is an int, and our variable, uh, our method return type is int, so we should be fine. And you can see an example of using that method down here. Um, we created another variable, which coincidentally has the same name, grad year, but then we've assigned it the value of our return value. Remember, whatever this method returns is just going to get substituted here, and it's going to become a simple assignment statement. So when we go to run our program, because Marcy is in the 10th grade and it assumes that it's going from this year, um, then she's going to graduate two years from now, which would make sense. Okay, so in this lesson, we've talked about an overview of um, the fact that return values provide the output for a method. We've talked about how they make our methods more flexible than just simply including print statements. We talked about the syntax, how you have to include a return type and a return statement inside your method, usually at the very end. And then we also talked lastly about using the at return tag inside our comments so that we can properly document our methods. Okay, you're all set.